Hi, I'm Ralph Langner, and in this video I'll discuss MyTree's program to evaluate ICS detection products. The program's goal is to simulate a Triton-like attack in MyTree's lab and check how well participating ICS detection products spot the attack. If you want to check out details, please see the link below in the description. Before we go into it, let's briefly recap the Triconex attack. This is not going to be a detailed technical analysis, it's just for context. I'll be drawing mostly from videos from the S4 conference, and again, all links can be found in the description below. So, in brief, in late 2017, a petrochemical facility in Saudi Arabia experienced a cyber attack against over a dozen of their safety systems. In this case, it's a triple redundant Triconex safety PLC, which was successfully compromised via the engineering stations. In other words, the engineering system was used as an attack vector against the safety PLC as the ultimate target, something that we have seen before with Stuxnet. The attack was detected at an intermediate stage when the safety PLCs caused a safe process shutdown due to an integrity violation. As it turned out, that was anything but the goal of the attackers. It was in fact accidentally caused by flaws in the attack code. In the investigation that followed, it turned out that the attackers had tried to install a generic backdoor for remote access on the Triconex, which would have allowed them to control the PLC's behavior afterwards, regardless of access control settings. For some context on this attack and its significance, you may want to, to view my discussion with Zach Tudor from INL, again from the S4 conference in 2018 and also linked in the description below. Now, MyTree has designed a similar attack scenario and will test various ICS detection products abilities to detect the elements of the simulated attack as far as it pertains to the various attack categories, which I won't explain here because there is ample material available on the internet. Here is how Otis Alexander of MyTree explains how the evaluation is going to work. Yeah, so there's a number of detection categories that are posted on the TAC eval site. Uh, we're looking to see, uh, is there some alert that is associated with the execution of an ind individual um, technique? So this could be uh, nothing pops up at all. It could be some telemetry um, that is showing data associated with the technique. Uh, it could be that um, you get some telemetry with some enrichment data uh, explaining what an analyst should do next uh, based on this alert. Uh, and then it could also get to the point where it's talking generally about the goal of the adversary or the tactic, uh, all the way down to we're showing or having some description talking directly towards how the adversary was accomplishing the goal or the technique. There is a number of considerations that we have. Uh, data correlation is one of them. Um, so are we tying telemetry to previously detected um, techniques? Uh, there's other things that we have to consider as well. Are there a lot of alerts? Is this gonna overwhelm uh, analysts that's looking at this? Uh, are there relevant details uh, to the alert and are the alerts actionable? So it's not just that uh, the solution is alerting, it's how it's alerting and what information is given to analysts to act upon. That is a lot of highly complex stuff. We got the telemetry, the enrichment data, data correlation and SOC analysts. What's wrong with this picture? Is there something wrong? What does your gut feeling tell you? When you discover a bunch of engineering systems for safety PLCs in your plant that are exposed to untrusted networks, what is your reaction? Is it, damn, let's quickly install fancy ICS detection products so that we will be able to detect the hackers when they strike? Or would you rather invest in other much more basic security controls that will protect these critical systems properly. Let's review the attack scenario. First, we have engineering stations for safety systems in untrusted networks. 
Let's hear it from Julian Gutmanis, who was actually on site when the attack happened. So the, the plan itself had um, relatively, on paper, had a, quite a secure architecture. Um, they had the ISO 95 layout, the different zones and conduits, um, a properly deployed um, security infrastructure to segregate IT and OT environments. Um, however, what we found during the review is the configuration of the, the DMZ firewalls um, was relatively insecure. So what had happened is that actually uh, enabled the attacker to pivot from the IT network into the DMZ quite easily, um, and then from the, the DMZ into the plant network. And then you talk about the engineering systems that were connected to the plant network um, allowed full access. What did I tell you 10 years ago when Stuxnet was fresh? Your engineering systems are among the most critical systems that you have. Protect them rigidly using network segregation and thorough endpoint protection, like fully up to patch operating systems, best case application whitelisting. Second, we have a DMZ that wasn't. It was the illusion of a DMC. Unfortunately, something that you can see rather often in the field. A DMZ that can be traversed in one direction is not a DMZ. It's security theater. So this is the big picture scenario. Now let me ask you again, is the appropriate response A, installation of ICS detection products so that you can see the hackers when they traverse your illusionary DMZ to infect your ill-protected engineering systems in order to then get serious about protection? Or is it B, the use of well-proven, plain vanilla security controls such as proper network segregation and endpoint protection? I know what you're thinking. You think that ideally both protection and detection should be installed. In a perfect world, it probably should. But the reality is that OT security often is so underfunded that you can't have both. So prioritization is called for. I myself would consider it rather misguided to see somebody install a detection appliance in the same subnet where a bunch of unprotected SIS engineering stations reside, rather than call the effort off and go for proper network segregation. The simpler the architecture, the more reliable it usually is. I'm getting the impression that in recent years, OT security is moving towards over-sophisticated solutions, especially as far as ICS detection products are concerned. We see super complex stuff like machine learning and real-time threat detection hyped up with no factual evidence that it actually works or that it would even be necessary in order to make a difference for OT security. At the same time, we see asset owners ignoring battle-proof basics. Those may not be cool, but they get the job done. So that's my opinion. What is yours? Let me know what you think in the comments below.